This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. What are the uh, buddy heaters? The buddy heater is the world's only patented indoor safe propane heater. It has an oxygen depletion sensor in it, and the idea is before the, the lack of oxygen could kill you from the uh, propane eating it up, it'll actually turn the unit off, making it safe. Yeah, because so. that's what it hurt is you can't run a propane heater inside of a vehicle or a tent or anything like yeah. that because you'll die from asphyxiation. Exactly, yeah. Even like your Coleman heaters, the little catalytic heaters, are actually being stricken from the code as being indoor safe because even though they produce such a small amount of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, they still kill people in tents. So those will no longer be indoor safe. In America, this will be the only indoor safe heater. Are there a lot of other indoor safe heaters? Or is this, this, is, this is it now. Yeah. This is the only one? This is the only one. Well, what's the technology? What makes it work? What makes it work is what we call an ODS, which is an oxygen depletion sensor. And it's basically built inside of this piece, which is the uh, pilot. And what happens is when flame is seeking oxygen, the oxygen's here, the flame comes up to seek it. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it disconnects from the pilot, and that turns the entire unit off. So it usually happens. So it's like a dead man switch. Exactly. Exactly. It's it usually, you don't die. Exactly. It's, a, it's an alive man switch. <laughs> nice. But yeah, it usually happens at about a one percent difference in oxygen. So the person would never even know that the oxygen level has gone down. It's such a minute amount that it can detect that it will pop off and turn off. So how would you safely use one of these in, say, uh, you know, a vehicle or a tent? Yeah. Now, Mr. Heater always recommends that you keep a window open, you, you have proper ventilation, you have a little bit of airflow in there. Um, again, it is indoor safe, so it's designed to turn it off, but we don't want that. We want you to be able to use it all night long if you, if you have to, or all day long in the, t in the cabin with it. Okay, so if I use it all night long, how many of these propane cylinders am I gonna go through? This propane cylinder will typically last you about two hours on high, four hours on low. So if you're running it on low, which believe me, if you're in a small area, Low will be fine. These things get really hot. Well, what kind of um, BTU output am I expecting from low? On, on high, 9,000. On low, 4,000. Wow. Even 4,000 is a lot for it. Is there a timer where it will kick on and off over time? No, no timer. You just got to, you, your sweat will be your timer. It'll <laughs> you get reach your warm. and turn it off. Absolutely, yeah. All right, maybe so. revision two. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, what are the other uh, products you guys are showing off here? So some of our other products, Mr. Heater is the heating division, obviously, and then Base Camp is our camping division. We do a fridge freezer that uh, has a bunch of different little features on it. It has a remote readout, so you can plug it into the front, and it'll actually tell you the voltage on your battery as well as the internal temperature of the uh, stuff inside. Okay, so it's got a wireless sensor for the temperature here? Exactly. Sweet. You can run it AC or DC. It's got three different uh, battery cutout levels, so you can adjust it from on the high 11.8, 10.7, or 10 even. When it gets there, it'll turn off so it won't drain your battery. It'll go from negative 8 to about 50 degrees, so you can use it as a freezer or a refrigerator. We do a washing machine for your cabins, so you can run it. It's 170 watt. It's an agitator, so you throw your clothes in with some front load washer dish. Uh, fluid, turn it on, rinse them with this, so you drop that, drain it, refill it, and then turn it back on to rinse it. Our biggest product in the camping line is the hot water shower, and on the opposite side we have free showers set up for everybody. The way this works is it has an internal battery, it'll run 40 minutes on the battery alone, it also has AC and DC hookups, so you can hook it up into your cigarette lighter or charge it at the house. And what you'll do is you'll come over here, hit your power button on, make sure it's coming out of your shower head because you could also use it as a sink if you wanted to. Hit start, you'll see the water come on, and then you'll see the burner light, and then you can feel the temperature. It's going to jump up pretty rapidly. That's nice and warm. Yep. So, and then you can actually read here the different temperature outputs. With the sun, it might be hard, but this is your internal temperature, and that's the outlet temperature. So, three degrees. Yep. So, uh, what's the gallons per minute on this guy? Eight gallons per minute. And that's some, pretty fast. Is yeah. it adjustable? Yeah. So, if you want to go a little bit uh, higher, more pressure, you can come here. You can dial it down on here. So, on your uh, sink output, you can dial it down to about four. So, if you want it a little bit hotter. Uh-huh. It's about four, it's like four or six, something okay. like that. And then the last thing is a safety feature. You can turn the water on and off here, 
But what happens is it turns the burner off. So Ooh. instead of the pressure building up and superheating and blowing out, when you turn it back on, you don't have super hot water and it'll light the burner again for you. I see. Yeah. And so uh, how long does a cylinder last on this guy? This Same one, cylinder. this is an hour on here. It's an 18,000 BTU. So you get an hour on this cylinder and uh, 40 minutes on the battery. And so all of these that work off of propane, uh, that, that heater and whatnot, uh, are they mm -hmm. elevation sensitive? The Buddy is elevation sensitive. It's only elevation sensitive because of the oxygen depletion sensor. As you go higher in, a, in elevation, there's less oxygen. So that flame will go up trying to seek it and it'll kick it off. Depends on the oxygen quality too. So if you're in a place like say Denver, that's high, it'll go off. But if you're in a place like Jackson Hole, where you got pretty clean air, you'll still be able to use it a lot of times. So there's some give and take there. Where can find yourself? You can find it at uh, mrheater.com. Awesome. Thank you much. I really appreciate hey, it. Hey, no problem at all. Thank you. It's great meeting you. And good luck on your journey. <laughs> Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show each week right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben shows viewers how to create an automated doggy treat dispenser. I'm totally using that for my cats. Now don't forget to go to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's ultimate gaming system as well as other builds from the show. Yeah, we're goal zero, and um, we started from a humanitarian uh, thrust. We, our owner actually started goal zero when he went to the Congo to try to bring some light and power to the people over there. Uh, didn't find any, any solutions he needed, so he came back and he started goal zero to bring power to, to Congo, to other parts of, uh, of the world, and also from um, disaster relief. And so now, what is the target market for goal zero? Goal zero is basically anybody who needs portable power. We got photographers, we got medical, we got, uh, you know, third world, we got preppers, you know, ham radio, CPAP, campers, hunters, hikers, anybody who needs some power when they're out off the grid. All right, well, tell me about some of your product lines. Like, uh, what, what are some of your most popular uh -huh. solar, uh, power yeah. solutions? Uh, well, we'll start with um, the Nomad 7. What the Nomad 7 is, is it's a small foldable uh, power solar panel mm -hmm. and from there you can collect the power you can charge your phone in directly to the panel or you can store it in a few of our smaller um, power packs we have the note we have the guide 10 which allows you to store that power and then plug in your phone later when it's uh, most convenient for you you can also pop out the batteries and use those double A's and other devices that you have and then you also have a version oh, with like a smaller battery yeah we have what we call the switch a and it has eight watt hours of power, which will take your smartphone all the way to full. It has removable caps from the ends, and you can swap those out for other tips. And as, as time goes on, we're going to be releasing other kinds of light bands, flashlights, fans, things like that. Oh, cool. But right now it's just USB. Right now it's just for phones. Okay. And so what kind of power do you get out of the battery? Do you, do you get like one amp, half an amp, two amps? Uh, you get one and a half amps out of the switch. All right. So no, not enough for an iPad, but enough for most phones. It'll give an iPad a nice kick, about 20%. Okay. And so what are the uh, the ca capacity differences here? Because this is just four AA batteries. Right. right. Or just rechargeable, what do we use? Nickel metal hydride or something? Yeah. You get about 10 watt hours out of the guide 10 and eight watt hours out of the switch. So these these really, the, the seven panel here is really made to be paired with one of these two. Yes. What kind of uh, charging time would you expect to you know, bring up one of these from zero all the way up? You can charge the guide 10 in about two to three hours, depending on, on the conditions. And so what, what kind of uh, technology is actually used in this foldable panel here? Is this amorphous, poly, this is, mono? This is monocrystalline. The same as in our rigid panels. It's just been adapted for a foldable format. And so what kind of challenges do you get in, as far as designing a product with you know, those mono panels in a flexible format? What kind of challenges do you have there? Well, we have to make sure that it's mounted to a substrate that doesn't allow the crystals to crack, but allows them to bend just a little bit. So they're very durable. We've run over them, we've stomped on them, and they still collect light. Run over them? Yeah, we have. We've, we've done everything. We've soaked them in the creek. We've done everything we can to test them, and, and they, they keep working. Even even when it's a little overcast, we get we get light going in there and, and charging up your stuff. And the, so the monocrystalline stuff, it, it gets an efficiency rating somewhere around what? 
Like about 17 to 20 percent, right around there. Okay. And what are the uh, the bigger battery pack options and panel options that you guys offer as far as uh, this is great for your phone. Yeah. But now I want to run everything else. I want to run refrigerators, and stereos, and okay. lights. Okay. Well, the whole, the whole concept is collect, store, use. And so we've talked about the the phone applications. We also have a, a step up from there, which is a pack called the Sherpa 50, and that lets you collect power from a bigger panel, plug in your laptop directly into there, and it lets you, gives you another 45 to two hour boost to your laptop time. When you say a bigger panel, what kind of size panel is that going to that's a, support? That's twice as big as the Nomad 7, it's called the Nomad 13, and it, it's just, it's got a bigger footprint, charges it up faster. So this, this is a 13 watt panel, Yes. and what if, if can I get, uh, you know, if I want 26 watts, can I do that, can I get two of these? And yes. Yes, they chain together. We've all we put them all on a on a system where you can get modular. You can chain them together and just multiply your your watt collection. So if I were to put two of these 13 watts together and plug it into the same battery pack, I'm basically just going to charge that same battery pack in, twi in twice as half the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, from the 13 watt panel, we can step up to a 27 watt panel, and those can chain into the system. Oh yeah, it folds out to. Big. What's, what's your biggest fold-out panel? Um, we have designs for a 90-watt panel that folds out. That would be something you could deploy like on a on a trip or on a you know you're camping or whatever, and you could charge up the larger power packs that we that we have. Show me the larger stuff. Okay. We like to t keep everything in watt hours. It's a good way to compare apples to apples. We've talked about the Guide 10 and we've talked about the uh, Sherpa 50. Well, this is called a Yeti 150. And uh, it's been beat up, it's a prototype, but we have it set up here as a, a phone charging station for the people here at Overland. And this will give you 150 watt hours of power. It's got the AC port, the USB, and some 12 volt options to allow you to charge all your devices. So 150 watt hours of 12 volts? 150 watt hours of total power available through AC or through 12 volt. Okay, so 110, 12, or? USB. USB for five. Yes. Awesome. And what are the kind of uh, bigger panels that you can put on this? Uh, well, this will charge up off of a Boulder 30. Let me show you those. Here we have an array of four 30 watt this one right here. solar panels. They chain together, giving you 120 watts of power. Um, What's the footprint on that? Uh, it's about, I don't know, 36 by 40, I'm guessing. And so how do these guys connect together? Well, I think that we've loaned out our cables to some of our, our friends here at the show, but basically the cables come from one output into the next panel's input, and then from out to in, and, and so forth, until the final panel you plug straight into your power pack, whether it's the 150 or the other power packs. So you're always running the panels in series? Correct. Okay. And so what about the batteries? Can you run the batteries in parallel? Yes, we have batteries that have a chaining port on them. So if you find out that, like, our 350, our Extreme 350 battery pack isn't enough for your needs, you can chain that into another 350 up, up to uh, a certain number where you can uh, quadruple your power. How big does it get as far as batteries are concerned? Yeah, what do you mean? How big? Well, what's your biggest battery? Okay. The biggest battery we have is this, is this Yeti 1250. And this is some serious power. It's got a 100 amp hour battery inside, a 1500 watt inverter, peaks at 3000 watts, has pure sine wave, three wall outlets, three USBs, it's got some 12 volt options, and an Anderson port output for higher demand. That allows you to input two, two of our eight millimeter ports or input from other solar panels via the and so can you chain this guy together with like another Yeti as well? Yeah, yeah. We have a larger Anderson port. And from here, you can chain that into other 12 volt batteries or into another Yeti. Oh, so even if you just brought your own like AGMs and then use this as the, you know, the, the head end with all of the inverter and everything, because it's got the pure sign right in it. Yeah, so this is kind of the user interface of your battery bank. And you can just chain other batteries alongside behind it. And then you just add power as you need it. So the idea here is I never have to think about red and black wires. I don't have to think about all of the different
different components, my battery, my charge controller, my panels, my inverter, you've got all of that in the box. Yeah. Well, that you can throw some panels on, you're done. Right, our, our whole theory is if you plug it in and if it fits, you did it right. And it's gonna work for you. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Hank. Yeah, you're welcome. This week in the Hack Shop, we're giving out free coins! Everybody gets a free coin! You can get a limited edition Hack 5 collector coin with the offer code FREECOIN. Head over to HackShop.com and use that coupon code during checkout. Now once again, our deepest gratitudes go to you for your continued support of Hack 5. Thank you so much, we couldn't do it without you. We're about to sign off, but first, make sure to check out HackAcrossAmerica.com. Darren just started his trip and he's going up the west coast to Portland, Eugene, Seattle. He might be going over to a couple other cities, so definitely check out HackAcrossAmerica.com so you can get all the information about what's going on with his major awesomely cool trip. Now we do value your feedback, so be sure to email us, feedback at hack5.org. We do read ev everything, so let us know what you think of the show and what you'd like to see us cover. And don't forget, you can always find everything that we're doing over at hack5.org slash follow. That's where you'll find links to our Twitters and to our Facebook if, if Darren had one, I have a Facebook, Google Plus accounts. We also have a Google Plus community for Hack5. You should definitely join in there. We have plenty of conversations going on. Don't forget hackshop.com for all of your penetration testing needs. And remember to plug in that coupon code free coin for that free collector's coin. It's awesome. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse. And for Darren Kitchen, we're reminding you to trust your technolist. Hack Across America.